Welcome everyone. This is the biggest college class slash college class unleashed we've ever had. I think it's the best time for us to have the biggest attendance because we've got a very special co-host today, Adam Dukes, AKA piss off boss of threads unleashed. Firstly, welcome Adam. This is the first time we've got to have some synchronous communication yes. because so much stuff is asynchronous on threads and in the DMs. Thanks for being here. hundred percent. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Super grateful. Like Bjorn and I have thought of a few questions that we could ask you. In that sense, the first segment of College Class Unleashed would be like a live podcast vibe, casual. For the second half, we might open it up to everyone else who's attended yep. and let them ask questions. Bjorn and I will just filter through those questions and try and make a logical flow out of them. Yeah, cool. I'll just fire the first question, Adam, if that's fine. Yeah, 100%. So, first one I have here is, which advice would you give someone who just started with zero followers on threads today, right? I guess you start not that long ago, May, June, something like that? Yeah, right. end of May. End of May. So that's yeah. not that long ago, and now you're closing on, on 10K followers, so that's mm -hmm. quite some growth. What advice would you give someone starting from scratch today? And do they need any former experience in direct response marketing or writing? What, what would your blueprint be? So this is perfect. My sister, she's not in this space at all. She's been watching my Instagram stuff the last couple of days. She's definitely intrigued. She texted me less than an hour ago, asking me basically the same thing. So she's very new. She doesn't use threads. She has a threads account just because it's attached to Instagram, mm -hmm. but doesn't use it. And so I literally told her, I said, just jump on threads. I said, use the search bar to search for people. She's into spirituality and stuff like that. So I said, search, search those type of terms and just start engaging, commenting on people who are talking about spirituality in that space. I said, just start commenting. The algorithm's pretty dang good on threads. You comment once or twice on some topic and you're going to see, I'll make a comment on a, a football game, American football, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and my, my feed is flooded with not flooded, but all of a sudden I say, I was like, I made one comment. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden I say, so it's, I, I guess it's, I guess it could be a gift and a curse. Just be careful on what type of stuff you comment on. So that's what I told her. I use the search bar and just start commenting on people's stuff. So that's pretty much what Threads Unleashed One was all about. Spending 80% of your time commenting on other people's stuff when you're first getting started. And, and I would say 80, probably 90% of my posts now are still comments on people's stuff. A lot of it's replying back to things on, on my post and things like that. But that would be like step one is you, know, you go to the search bar, find some people, comments or following those type of people, you're going to start seeing more of that stuff in the feed, whether you follow those people or not, because how the algorithm works, spend 80% of your time just commenting. Uh, and a lot of times is I'll comment on somebody's post, but that jogs something in my head. Oh, that's a good answer. Or how they asked it. I'm going to post that on, on my feed. I tell people, if you're running out of content ideas, just go comment on five posts. If you don't come away with something to share on your own feed after five comments, it's almost impossible. I'm a big believer in commenting to start off with. That gets the ball rolling. Comments are, is like the biggest lever mover. And it's yeah. almost like prompts for your own content, right? That's yes. how I try to look at it. Like, what would a good comment be for you? Because you can have like shallow comments, but you can also like have comments filled with value, so to say, like, how do yep. you approach it? Yeah, I try to leave, I try to leave something. Yeah, I, I try to leave. When I was first starting out, there was times I'd spend 20 minutes on a comment. They, they might ask me something. I might, hey, my Instagram account's not working. I'd open up their Instagram. I do a lot of my stuff on threads on the desktop. It's just easier for me. I'd open up their Instagram account and I'd look through, I'd look through a couple of their reels or captions, and then I'd go back and give advice, but it took, it wasn't a 10 second comment. It wasn't good job, keep going type of thing, but it was a, it was a longer comment. So I, I suggest to people, I'd rather have you leave five thoughtful comments as opposed to 20, good job, awesome emoji. And not to say, don't do that, do that in, in, in do that as well as leave them as thoughtful comments. But my comments are typically, I don't always agree with the original poster if I have a different opinion and, and I don't do it. Like I, I try not to do it in a mean way where I'm attacking them. I just said, Hey, you know what? That X, Y, Z didn't work for me. This is how I did it. It's something along those lines. But yeah, I try to add value to the conversation in the comment um, by sharing some sharing based off my perspective, some experience that I had, not just 
try not to just have all opinion. Oh no, this doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? And I'll share, it didn't work for me because X, Y, Z. So I did A, B, C and it, that's, it works for me type of thing. Five thoughtful comments over kind of 20. I, there's a couple of people that comment on my post. 99% of their comments, it's just a, it's just an emoji. And it's kind of, I don't want to say a waste of time, but I think they're, they read maybe threads on least one and they're just like, I'm engaging. I'm engaging with Adam. I left a fire emoji. It's, you've done that on every single post. And, mm -hmm. and again, not to say don't do that, but at least if, if there's a place where you can add some value and your thoughts, perspectives, your opinions, your story, share that. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's quality over quantity here. Yes. And yeah. rather have five very strong, valuable comments placed yep. in a day than like 20 to 30 comments because like I've started out on X about six months ago. I quit that, but the, the advice is always like put 30 or 50 replies in yes. per day, yeah. but that's horrible advice if you think yes. about it. And like yeah. threads actually empowers good comments and yep. yeah, that those are some great tips also to be a bit controversial. And we also specifically look for creators who are like more on the controversial side. So you can also give your strong opinion. Yeah, so, sometimes I do. I'm more, mainly sure more of the strong opinions just on my feed. Uh, I try not to get, I guess, the kind of arguments or where I disagree with someone, but there's times that I'll, you know, if I don't agree and I'll, you know, like I said, I do it in a nicer way, but like using the search bar, I think a lot of people sleep on that. Like that's really powerful. Searching, I don't know, come up with five or six keywords in your space and, and search for that and, and start engaging with that. I, yeah, I usually leave like the more controversial stuff just on my, my specific feed. I, I don't want to be, when it's text-based, it could really be taken out of context. If somebody's looking and they see, I disagree with them and God, who, who's this guy? And it just can be a negative right off the, and it's, oh, I didn't mean it that way. But on my own feed, I'll post something controversial. And if they disagree, so this is my feed. I don't want to. I don't want to go pee in their backyard with some <laughs> negative comment or be perceived as like a negative comment. So yeah, that. I think that gets us into the next section, like, because now we talked about comments and engaging as like the first lever mover, but what's, yep. would be like the next step? What should you capitalize on once you get that like engagement ball rolling, once you like get that comments and you repurpose them into content, is that a, a good roadmap to get to that 1k followers in a certain nice time frame? and how should you keep the ball rolling and how would you transform that? Traction you might or should have by doing this technique into actually like conversion into your offer, into your things you are selling. Like, how does that work? Yeah. So my, like the two things that I always recommend, and it's like the first, I think it's step, there's tip one and tip two and Fred's Unleashed one. The first is commenting, but then the, the second is right now, I, I call them long forms. And I, I got that name from the Twitter guys. I didn't come up with the name, but just writing long forms, like those mini blog posts where it's multiple threads attached to one, because like how I think about it, if you're out there leaving comments on people's posts and, and you leave something insightful and it, it makes somebody think and go, huh, that's interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to check out this guy's profile. And then if they come over to my profile and maybe they see a long form, maybe I have it pinned at the top of the screen or pinned at the top of the profile. Uh, and maybe they read the long form and go, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about or, or the opposite. I don't like his stance. I'm not going to follow him, which is either, either way is fine. So I like writing long forms, those series of uh, threads that are tied together. Those are really powerful. They, they take time though. Yeah. yeah. And same with commenting the, the longer detailed comments, it, it all takes time. People are looking for the quick hacks and, but, but write and start off with maybe like three long forms a week. And I try like my long forms. It's, it, I, I try not to like teach. It's just what I did, what I did or what I'm doing. I, I'll list out like three to five problems that my audience has. I'll list out three to five desires and I go, okay, here's how I solved X, Y, Z problem. And I list it out. I don't hold anything back. I, I share it all. And sometimes I'll pitch at the end, at the end of the post, I'll pitch. But the first month I had nothing to pitch. I wasn't selling anything. So the pitch would be follow me for more type of thing. That would be the call to action. So those long, I think the combination of commenting, the commenting the five comments a day and then writing three, maybe to start off three long forms a week. And then if you can get up to four or five, that, that, that combo right there, just those two things, you could do it in 30 to 45 minutes a day. If you're pressed for time and you could space that out. But I think doing those two things, that'll get to a thousand followers the fastest. Okay. I, I did have so many thoughts about the, this whole question about this whole point about comments. And the first thing I wanted to touch on was just that point you mentioned about longer comments and 
like you, you said, you, you know, you would spend maybe 20 minutes on one comment and the idea of that might sound pretty outrageous, but I remember actually doing something really similar when it was like still possible to do that, not 20 minutes every comment, yes. but I'm talking about a good amount of time on each comment because honestly, there weren't that many comments for me to at least reply to, unless I was just going outbound and finding comments to reply to. And I honestly think that was one of the best things I did to build really good relationships at the start. And I've still got a lot of good relationships with those people. And a lot of them are in Saints College now, almost a year later. And I would put it down to the depth of the conversations I had in those comments. And if we're like using length of comments as a proxy for depth, then that's how you build the community aspect of threads instead of the like followers aspect. So I just wanted to like really double click on that and highlight it because I think it was a really important point you mentioned. And that also feeds into this idea of a few people in Saints College will know of the like Gary V's $1.80 strategy and how it talks about giving your two cents on 90 different posts. And obviously the whole point is that there's a lot of quantity there, but imagine if your two cents is actually worth $2 on all of those 90 mm -hmm. posts. Yep. Now, obviously yep. that's yep. a lot of work, but that's, it is work here. Yeah. And I think we're all here because we enjoy it, but obviously yep. this takes a lot of work. And I just wanted to touch on that because I thought it was a really important point, but I'll hand it back over to Bjorn was the had you already touched on the direct response marketing aspect, Bjorn? I think that's one of my next points on the list. Maybe I want to wrap up the short form, long form thing. Can I conclude that like the short form posts, your comments is like the way to grab attention and to get actually people into your, to your profile, into your stuff. And the longer form is more for nurturing, is more for building authority and yep. like leading people deeper into your offer, into your other stuff outside of threats. Is that like a good conclusion I can draw here? Yes. Yeah. I look at like short, that short form, you know, over on Twitter, they call it platitudes. You know, that's what it was. They were popular a few years ago. They, it, they don't work on Twitter nearly as well as they did. And they're just short one sentence, feel good statements that pretty much everybody can agree with motivational, inspirational stuff. And a lot of guys over on Twitter grew very big just sharing platitudes, but they're, they're, they're shallow. They're, they don't have much depth to them, but they work at the beginning right now. There's a few people that do just platitudes on threads and, and growing and selling and doing well, because it's such a newer platform, but yeah, that's how I look at it as the short form is the kind of the top of the funnel, the, my long form post are the more the kind of the middle of funnel convert the bottom of funnel type stuff. Yep. 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 All right. All right. And also to sum up the ingredients you've mentioned for a good long form post, it would be like how you did something. So it implies your credibility, your authority, but also yeah. how you solve a certain problem. So you take someone yeah. from a pain to a solution. And yeah. then, so that's leading by value is how I would call it. And then at the end, you would plug a CDA being either follow yeah. me or yep. here's my newsletter or here's my, yes. my threats unleashed in your case or whatever that might yep. be. Right. Exactly. hundred percent. Yep. All right, cool. That maybe brings us to that, to Threats Unleashed 1.0, right? Because you made, I looked it up today, 90K dollars, 19K dollars. Yeah. <laughs> 90 would be nice too. Selling Threats Unleashed 1.0. I'm super curious to delve in, like, how did that come together? And can any one of us do pull something off like that? Yes, July, it was like 14,000 with Threads Unleashed and then 5,000 in other products. So the, the combination right. was 19. Yeah, I honestly, I jumped on Threads, like I said, May 30th and just took a little different approach. I'm just going to, I'm just going to answer questions based off of the years of experience on social media and just be of service. And, and I don't think I really pitched anything in that first 30 days. I might've said something here and there, but it, it wasn't planned out. But, and then people were asking like, how are you growing so fast? What are you doing? All these secrets. And I was just, gosh, maybe I should write like an ebook on just the things I did. It, it seemed so basic to me, but, and a lot of it was because I was on Twitter back in 2017, 2018, 2019. It was getting popular. Like my, it was called money Twitter and all that. It was new back then. Money Twitter was new. And so I just applied, I implemented a lot of what I learned six years ago on the threads because it was like threat is no, and it worked really well. And so I just put together, I put together threads unleashed based off people asking me, I didn't even feel like I, I had 800 followers and I was like, 
I'm not, I can't, I'm not an expert. I can't teach this. And so I had like imposter syndrome big time, even though people were asking me for help. And so there was a lady that put out a guide on threads, uh, teaching how to grow on threads. And she had 400 followers and I had 800. And I was like, wait a second. I have more followers than her. If she can teach it, I can teach it. So basically she gave me permission that I could write a, t- a guy. And I, I messaged her and I thanked her. I'm like, dude, Katie, if it wasn't for you, I, I would have done this. So it's like just seeing her do it with less than, not that followers matter, but it just was like, okay, if she's doing it, I can do it. So that's, I put it together and, and put it out there. I don't know. I didn't know it was going to do what it did. I think that part of it with having that master resale right, and I knew that would help spread the message. That would help the virality of it. If I didn't do that, it wouldn't have done as well. So that helped uh, that I took that into effect and pricing it at $10 to launch it. That that's a impulse purchase. But I think that the, the reason it was so successful from the start was I spent 30 days of just really focused on my community, three to four hours a day, answering the questions. Like I said, I would do these Instagram audits. If the ironic thing was somebody would say, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling on Instagram. I did, nothing's working. I'm not getting views, sales, whatever. And I would go look at their Instagram. This is what I'm saying when it took me 20 minutes to comment. And I would jot down. So I call it a critique sandwich. So I would say something complimentary, something positive. And then I would share like three points that were, I would critique them. And then I would end with something positive. I would try to do it that way. So I didn't come across as totally negative. And people loved these audits. And what was interesting was, honest to God, I think I had 200 followers on Instagram at the time. Most people's audits I was doing had a lot more followers than I did. And I don't think anybody looked at that. I was just giving it like a direct response. Hey, this is what I think you're doing wrong or and not necessarily wrong. This is how you could improve. But people really liked those audits. And again, like I said, they were detailed. You could read it and go, he didn't just whip this up. He took some time. So I think it was building that community for that first 30 days. And again, when I jumped on threads, there was no intention. I'm selling an ebook on threads. It, it, this wasn't planned. It wasn't part of my strategy. It was by the seat of my pants type thing. So I think that was a big part of it was that 30 days beforehand of really just serve, wasn't really pitching, just helping just based off my knowledge and experience. And so I think that was a big part of making threads only so successful. Mm. I have so many like nuggets and questions and follow-up things that I want to ask about here because firstly, oh gosh, where do, where do we get? Okay. <laughs> but the lady with the 400 followers and then you saw that, wait a second, I've got 800. So here is my excuse. To me, that's saying the main point for everyone on this call is that there is always someone behind you in your journey that you can yeah. help regardless yeah. Of like, in this case, followers is a very easy thing to look at because it's measurable and you like, okay, I'm at 800, this lady's at 400, but what, whatever your thing is, there is always someone at least one step behind you. And because that's the case, that means you, that you're always qualified to help someone. So the point that you, I think Adam's really driving home here is that you don't need to be an expert. So that's one. Secondly, the critique sandwich is amazing and this is just something that we're actually we we're doing this a little bit in saints college uh, a few months ago because it just makes so much sense start off with something good get to the meat of what you could be improving on and then start off finish off with something bad that's just such a great formula and then before i touch on the mrr because i think that was that's got to be a huge turning point for thread unleash in terms yep. of just how yep. viral yep. it got but also I just want to quickly touch on and emphasize what you said about the loads of free value and how think about how everyone, if you're listening to this, think about how you can do what Adam has done on threads, go above and beyond helping those people on threads and give away everything mm-hmm. as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Because I know for a fact that Adam has posted a lot of stuff that's actually in threads on leash mm-hmm. on threads. Bjorn and I, obviously Saints College is free. We could charge for it, but we still post a lot of the stuff that's in Saints College on threads. The fact, the information is not where the value is in the implementation and the personalization. So just don't worry about giving away too much. There's no such thing. It will only benefit you positively. But to wrap this little nugget up, I really wanted to ask you about, was the MRR a deliberate thing at the beginning or was like, as you were just about to publish Threads Unleashed, were you thinking, 
But yeah, I'll just turn on the MRR and see what happens. Was there much strategical thinking involved or was it just a, oh, I'll just see what happens. Yeah. So I, it's funny I because I the MRR and then when I announced it was MRR, people were like, they're like, are you, are you serious? Yeah, you, you bash it. And so I saw the benefits of uh, Hannah and Zach, the, they created the roadmap, the original master research. And I saw the benefits of what it did for their brand, the long term. And, but I know managing a community long term with MRR, it's not beneficial for the product creator. Hence why most of them are switching to the failure out. It, 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 long term, it's not. I had no interest in managing a community of 10, 20, 30,000 people. That takes resources, that takes time, that takes hiring people. But I wanted the benefit of the brand. Yeah, I saw what it did for their brand. And, and then some people started creating these PDFs and these guides with master resale rights. And I was like, wait a second, I could create a, a, a guide. I could get the benefit of the brand, but there wouldn't be any ongoing commitment. I, I wouldn't have to manage this community. And so I was, I think it's the best of both worlds. So yeah, it was deliberate. I knew I wouldn't make as much money with it. And I made a post about this last week because I'm basically creating competition with myself. Hey, you can sell the same, you can sell threads and leash just like I'm selling it. But I knew that, but I was like, I, th I didn't know it was going to go as well as it did, but I was like, I, I want the benefit of the brand. People call him threads king, the king of threads, God, like that. You can't measure that in dollars and cents, but, but, but those nicknames that people give me, that's worth all of it. And then of course, launching threads and leash two on Monday, I, we did well, I did well with threads and leash. I topped the weekly sales of threads on like one and on Monday, <laughs> but it, 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 but it goes all back to the brand. So that was, so yeah, the MRR was deliberately, but I'll be honest, this, uh, uh, thread when they chose the affiliate route and it's only two and a half days into it. The MRR, it was a lot easier. I've had a lot of headaches with the affiliate route with affiliate links. People don't understand how affiliate links work and, and they, Hey, I, I made a sale. Susie bought for me, but I didn't get credit. Like it depends on who clicked the link first and it's confusing. So people don't understand that. So it's been a lot to deal with kind of behind the scenes with the affiliate. And as of right now, if I would do Threads Unleashed 3, no plan on that. I would probably go back to MRR. It was just so much easier. It was a lot easier. You don't make as much money, but it is a lot easier. Again, I might change my tune on that in a couple of weeks once the dust is settled. But it's been a lot of, a lot of people don't know how to do affiliate links and again, how they work and all that. So that's been, that part's been challenging. But yeah, the MRR was deliberately done. Um, again, I didn't foresee it being that big. But like I said before, it wouldn't have went as viral if it was just the affiliate product, there's something about that with that MRR. Obviously it has to be a good product too. You slap MRR on it and it goes viral. You, you need both. I have thought that, so with the MRR, because I was trying to reverse engineer the thought process and th put myself in, okay, what is Adam thinking? Yep, yep, yep. And obviously it's the revenue is not the main concern because you wouldn't do MRR if it was. It's yep. obviously got to be the brand. Yeah. And Threads Unleashed has got a name of its own now. And yep. if I was to put it down to one tactical thing that pays for the fact that you chose MRR and then some, it would be, if you go to this off boss on Threads right now, you'll see Adam Jukes stash creator of Threads Unleashed. Yep. So everyone, not everyone, but like thousands of people yep. are promoting this product, yep. but then only one person can have creator of threads unleashed yeah and that right there i would put money on that converting thousands of followers for you yeah. because they see them like that's him that's the guy yeah, 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 yeah. and that yeah. is where yeah. the money is like yeah. the money so to speak yeah. so i think genius and we're all here because it was i think because of the mrr in some shape or form because it's just spread like wildfire so that was just yeah. such an excellent decision and i suppose that leads to a follow-up question. Why did you decide to do the affiliate for 2.0? What was the, the thought process for going from MRR to affiliate? I want, I've seen some people like, you know, so, as I've seen a couple of people, they'll say, they'll give their thoughts on going the affiliate out there at Master Resorts. And I'll say, have you done both? And sometimes they haven't done either. Sometimes they've done one or the other. And I was like, how can you comment? <laughs> so I was like, I want to know. I, I want to know. I can comment on MRR because I did that. But I can't comment on the affiliate because I haven't done it. I can speculate. 
five days ago before Monday, like on Saturday, I could have speculated about affiliate. Now here we are on Wednesday and I can tell you, gosh, there's a lot of headaches to it that I didn't anticipate. Money was part of it. I'm not going to BS you. You know, I, I was like, okay, I'm going to make more money because like people are still selling threads at least one here four months later. And I'm like, man, just think if I got a little percentage of each of that sale, 10%, 20, whatever it is, that would be nice. Now, would people be pushing it as hard if it was an affiliate product three months, four months later? That's debatable. Probably not. But it was, I was like, I think I can make more money. I've built a brand. I've, I've established myself, but I did want to compare the two. And now I'll be able to write up a post or be able to talk knowledgeably about both. And I can share because I have the experience. And like I said, I've seen posts where people will bash one or the other. And sometimes they've, they haven't done either. This sort of comes back to what you were talking about earlier about your, the secret ingredients, the long form posts on threads. Mm -hmm. And how it, just such a great formula is how I, because yes. that yeah. always wins because yes. it's, no one can take that experience away from you. Yes. And absolute worst case scenario, you could write this great story in a post about how I maybe gave up a hundred thousand dollars in revenue in threads, like unleashed one, and then tried affiliate in threads unleashed two. And made a hundred thousand dollars more, but how it actually failed, and here's why. What a great story yeah. that is! I yeah. would want to read on that. Yeah. Obviously, it was a bit of refining in the hook, but yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. you're learning lessons here yeah. that you can then share to people a few steps behind you, and that's the sort of the thread and pun absolutely intended is leading us to Threads Unleashed 2.0. How would you describe the difference? between 2.0 and 1.0, the differences and like the full process that went into it. Basically, yeah, tell us all about it. Yeah, so Threads one, Threads Unleash 1.0 is more about building an audience. A lot of it's the fundamentals of writing. It could be that I could change the title to social media copywriting. That's basically what it is. It, it works on any platform. It's writing. It wouldn't have sold as well if it was called social media copywriting. It, it, like part of me, I somewhat pigeonholed myself by including threads in the title. However, it wouldn't have done nearly as well if it was made for all the platforms. So mm -hmm. niching onto the platform definitely helped. But I would cut the, a lot of the first half of Threads Unleashed One is just one sentence paragraphs, a lot of white space, optimizing for mobile, stuff like that. I, I don't use, or I recommend, I don't want to say I don't use, I try not to use any. And, or I try not to use any words that end in L-Y, those kill things right away. I try to be specific. And again, that's it, uh, email, Facebook, LinkedIn, it works on any platform. So a lot of it's like the fundamentals of writing that first one, building an audience. And then the second one is more about the mon monetizing the audience. A lot of it is I'm trying to give them permission. My, my, big, my big idea is make more offers. And what I mean by that is just pitch your product more. And I find a lot of people just don't do it enough. They're like, Adam, I have, I, I struggle with sales. And I, one of the first questions I'll say, how many offers have you made in the last seven days? And they're like, I don't think any. And so you're not making enough offers. So that's my big idea. So Thread Them Leash 2 is almost, I'm trying to give them permission and in, in, in motivate them, inspire them to make at least one offer a day in a sense, whether that's jump on your email list, whether that's buy my product, but getting them in to practice making one offer a day. Cause that's such a, it's such a mindset for people that they really struggle with making offers. They don't want to be mm -hmm. too salesy. They don't want to burn out their audience. I just made a post. I just made a post right before jumping on here, increase the price last night at midnight. Five sales came in at 1145 to 1159. Two sales came in at 1159. Say so the price goes up at midnight, price goes up at midnight. People wait to the last minute. But I, I, I was sharing that, but I was pitching. I think if you scroll my feed from 11 to midnight last night, I think I made four offers. I was pushing it because I knew the deadline was coming. I'll probably go back through today and delete those posts because it is maybe a little bit too much, but it was because the deadline was coming and I just know how human beings wait on things. Audience growth would be number one fundamentals of writing. And then number two would be more monetization, but I really struggled with it. People were asking for part two, probably since August. And I put so much pressure on myself and I'll be a hundred percent honest. I haven't scrolled my threads feed in three days, or I should say very minimal because I do not want to see the comment threads on each one was better than two. I, I don't want to see that. And I know that's silly. But I do not want to see that because that's going to really mess with my head. So I'd rather just ignore the feed altogether because um, I don't want to see that. I I've seen some people tag me saying two is better than one, but I know people. 
And I can't control that. And it's a silly mindset thing that I got to get over. But I put so much pressure that I didn't want to, I set kind of the bar kind of high for the first one. And I don't want to fall short. And people go, gosh, one was a lot better than two or one was better than two. It's silly, but I, I really, I was telling my buddy yesterday, I'm like, I don't want to go on the feed because I don't want to see a comment because then that'll really like, really gets in my head. Well, that's opened a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, I, <can't. laughs> I know that's something that we can all relate to here. Yes. I'm not specifically that being the creator of Thread to Leash and making 2.0 better than one or vice versa, but just that idea of the hate that we can experience and how it can really impact you mentally. Yes, 100%. I've spoken about it inside the community. I know we've all experienced it in some shape or form. And look, I, I guess on that topic, do you have any sort of tips for how to deal with it? Because it's hard. Yes. Knowing that I can't control it, what they think, their opinions, their thoughts, I can't control it. They're going to have their thoughts. And of course, there's going to be people out there that say one is better than two. And there's going to be people out there that say the opposite. There's going to be people out there that say ABC course on threads is better than Adams or threads on one or two. I don't want to see that either. But it's people have different preferences. You, you know, can't please everybody type of attitude. And it's funny because I talk about that and I share that. And a lot of my content is I'm just advice to myself, you know, like, like advice to my current self. Like right now, I'm not trying to share it. It's just, I'll say something and don't worry about people's opinions. I'm not telling you that. I'm telling myself <laughs> a diary. That's how I look at mm. it. Um, but you can't control that. They're going to have their thoughts. They're going to have their opinions on things. And it's not necessarily wrong. And it, it, it got, again, I'm, I'm giving myself advice as I'm, I'm being on this call. It's very meta, but that that's how I'm trying to look at it, how I'm trying to see it through that lens. And my buddy can't stopped over yesterday and we were talking about it and he's, you can't control it. They're going to have people. And I was like, that's a good point, dude. I didn't really look at it like that. I didn't really think of it like that, but I scrolled the feed last night and it was just like threads on these two. And it was all over the place. And he was, he's not really active on threads and he's, dude, I see it all over the place. Yeah. So I guess that's it. You can't control their opinions. It's going to happen. You have to accept it. Again, that I'm looking into a mirror here. As I'm saying this, I'm looking down at my screen because I'm, I'm talking, I'm trying to give myself advice. I've thought about this a lot because I will be, and one of our key values, I, I think on threads generally, and then in Saints College specifically, is just transparency, vulnerability. I'll be completely transparent and vulnerable here. When I first saw you on threads, no, no contact whatsoever. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? He's, yeah, I'm is the guy. Yeah. <laughs> because, Yes. I thought I was the threads guy. Yes. And then everyone, there are so many people who are in the same niche. And yeah. I mentioned that because one of the things that helped me overcome this idea of what about the other people? What about Adam or the other person who has a school community about threads yeah. or whatever yeah. is reminding myself that as long as we, and I say we as in Bjorn and I, continue doing the best that we can do in our thing. That's all that matters. Yes. Yes. And yes. I bring that up because I'm sure like deep down, that's how it is for you with Reds Unleashed yep. too. Like you've done the best you can do and that is all that matters. You put it out there. Now it is, this is coming from what's the Rick Rubin book. The, well, how have I forgotten the name of it? Create, I can't believe I've blanked on the name. It, it, there were the great books that came out a few, like a year or two ago. And it's like, you put the work out into the world and then your job is done and now it's for everyone else to receive it. Okay. But, yep. Like the creative act, that's what it's called. Okay. But yep. you've done the best you can do with that art, so to speak. Yeah. And that is worthy of, I just wanted to mention that and to directly relate it to people on the call, like when it comes to this idea of, oh, what will so-and-so think? Or yep. I don't know if I want to express myself in this way. Just know that you're entitled to your beliefs and you're entitled to express them confidently. And as long as you just do that and do your best and have tunnel vision and continue following that path of who you are and what you believe in, it sounds a bit cliche, but honestly, yep. that's the only thing you can control is like that little lane, everything outside of it, you can't. So there's no point, logically speaking, worrying about it. And as Chanel said, I create because I love it. How people perceive it is not my business. Yeah. And yep. easier said than done, but I think it's yep. a really powerful reminder. Yep. And Adam, you've just echoed it as well. So everyone take it on board and soak it up like a sponge. Yep. 
I really think it all, I, and I talk about it a lot. Gary B, B talks about it a lot. Alex Humosi talks about it a lot. I really think that it's fear of judgment. Like that is all this is the fear of judgment. Carmosi said, if you boil down my message, all the stuff I talk about, all the business stuff I talk about, he's, I'm just trying to help people not worry about the opinions of others. Gary Vaynerchuk talked about fear of judgment all the time. I, I, I talk about it a lot in my stuff. Uh, and it is because I struggle with it. And, and again, it's like giving advice to myself in a sense, don't worry about what other people think or say, you can't control that. But it's, that part is hard, but it's the fear that people think, oh, it's the fear of failure. And I, I don't think it's the, it's not the fear of failure. It's the fear of if you do fail, what is your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your grandma, your grandpa, your boss, your coworker, your next door neighbor gonna think about you? That's what you're worried about. It's not necessarily the failure itself. It's what are they going to think about you? And it, it, that's really all it boils down to is, is that what, and, and, the, and the, the, the funny reality is like, they're not watching as closely as you think they are because they're too worried about what other people are thinking of them. And it, it's like a dog chasing its own tail, but it's just this weird thing that we're, we're so concerned about what other people think or say. Um, and again, they're, they're living their lives. They're, they're, not that concerned about what you're doing. Not nearly as much as you think they are. The spotlight effect is probably yes. the most liberating thing that I've ever learned about. And just for anyone who isn't aware, imagine you believe that you have a spotlight shined on you and all the attention is on you. But the paradox is in the fact that everyone else thinks they have a spotlight on them. Yeah. So yep. Yep. It, it creates this immense feeling of freedom and just liberty knowing that, oh, they won't actually give the fuck. I can just be me. Yes. Yes. And look, I've, I've actually got one more question before we open it up to the groups. Everyone here, please just throw in some questions in the DM. DMs. DMs? Not the DMs, the chat. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Bjorn. <laughs> and it is about this idea of building in public because mm -hmm. I've noticed as mm -hmm. you've been rolling out Threads Unleashed mm -hmm. 2.0 over the last couple of weeks, and you've been asking lots of questions and asking about which cover do you prefer? Yep. And you've yep. even had people like create covers for you. Yep. Uh, how, what does building in public mean to you firstly? And the second part of the question is how do you approach it? Okay. Yeah. I got the idea from the Twitter bros, the SaaS guys, they're building software. A lot of those guys over on Twitter build it in public and just document. They're very transparent about oh, everything. Yeah. They, there's a software out there. I think it's called benchmark where you can look at their sale, look at the their live dashboard of how much money they're making. Why? Like it is building in public. So that's the idea or that's, it's just modeling what those guys do. So that's just what I've been trying to do. Monday when I launched Threads Unleashed 2, I did a bunch of Instagram stories, just talking head. And I looked back at them Monday night and pretty much it was all that the mistakes I made. It, it wasn't like, Hey, look how much money I make. It was all like, I screwed this up. I, I, I was up till 2 AM. I set it up on three platforms. I had WordPress ready. I, I, I set Threads Unleashed 2 up Sunday night at 2 AM. It's launching at eight Monday morning in six hours. I didn't know what platform I was going to use. Honest to God, I had it set up on WordPress. I had it set up on Samcart and I had it set it up on system.io. I went to bed that night, not sure knowing what I was, what platform I was going to use. Cause I was having issues with each of them. Wow. I woke up at six 30. I ran to the gas station to get a coffee. I didn't have time to go grocery shopping Sunday because I was working on threads on these too. And I was like, I need a coffee. I, I've only had four and a half hours of sleep. So I went up, got coffee, got a, a Mountain Dew and I got back to the house at like quarter to seven. I planned on sending the email out at seven to the early bird people. I didn't know what platform I'm going to use. Driving back from the gas station, I'm like, Sam Cart, I'm going to go with Sam Cart. So literally an hour before, but I shared that. Like I shared, it wasn't like, and that was my fault, you know, hundred percent my fault. I should have had that all sorted out beforehand, but I was just sharing. This is a mess. I didn't have the affiliate program ready. I wanted to have it ready. And then I said, Sam Cart's affiliate program, it's $319 a month. And I made it, I made a video 10 minutes after I bought it. I did not want to spend $319 a month. I'm very frugal. I, I was trying to find a cheaper alternative, but the cheaper alternative was a lot more tech and a lot more headache, and a lot more customer support. And I was like, man, maybe I should just. I'm selling on Sam cart. They have an affiliate program, but I just didn't, it was 159 a month up to 319 a month. And so I'm scrambling around trying to find a cheaper alternative, which is causing me a headache. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to bite the bullet. I'm going to upgrade my Sam cart to the 319 a month. And then I made a video about that. And I said, I'm frugal. I don't want to spend that money, but everything just started working. It was like, that was money well spent. It, it was done. I, there was no customer support. Everything was ready. It was very easy to set up. I set it up without even watching tutorial videos. Here I am stressing out for an hour and a half beforehand, trying to save about a hundred bucks 
stressing out. I'm on the, uh, the chat with a different software company. And then the fact I spent the money, I solved the problem. So I made a video about that and, and saying, I'm an idiot. Basically, don't do what I did. Invest. It's I'm not spending the money. I'm investing the money. And, and so I made a lot of videos about that, about the mistakes I made. I didn't have things ready. People were giving me suggestions. I was saying, I thank you for the community for helping out, for giving me ideas on, on how to make, how to improve the product, how to make it a little bit easier for people. So I, I was literally like, something would happen. Instagram story. So I've been like, yeah, it was, it was almost live. It was almost like somebody had a live stream on me while I was reporting back of the mistakes I was making. And of course I was saying, I took a screenshot of like, I had made, I think in the first 11 minutes, it was like $695, which blew my mind. I shared a screenshot of that, but that was really the only like bragging point. Everything else was like a mistake and, or the lesson I learned from that mistake. So that's how I look at the building as public as sharing the mistakes. Cause that's what people really are like. Like, of course, sharing the wins as well, but sharing the mistakes and being vulnerable, it just sticks out because very few people do that. Uh, I had one lady say like, you, out of all the people that I follow online, you, you talk about your failures more than anyone. And I was like, it gives me a lot of content. She's like, I have a lot of failures, but I, I think it's people, oh, and I'm very open. I'm, I tell people like it's 80, 20, like 80% of the stuff that I try does not work. I just look for that 20. And once I find that 20, I try I tried to triple or quadruple down, but I, I'm just as bad as some, uh, maybe some others. I find something that works and I'm like, okay, this is working. Let's go try this. You know, let's go do something over here. Yeah. It's, wait, this is working. But I do that often, as silly as that sounds. I, I love it. And I couldn't help but think about this, the kind of ratio of wins to mistakes. Yes. And this would probably sound like it's a, a bit more on the extreme end, but it's just to drive home this point of a one to 20 win to mistake ratio yep. when you're really embracing this idea of building in public. And I couldn't also help but think that building in public is pretty much the same as Gary V's saying of document, don't create. Yes. yes. Because by its very nature, the documentation is going to involve a lot of mistakes and trial and error. So yep. it all weaves into one another. And I, I guess for, for everyone else who's listening, think about deconstructing what you normally do and how those mistakes are probably things that you just normally like dismiss because mm -hmm. you think it's boring, but mm -hmm. Adam, I'm sure you could reinforce this. The stuff that's boring is the stuff that you're documenting and is the stuff that's really helping you build awareness about the product. Yes. Yeah. I, I made a post back, I think it was before threats and leash one. It was the end of June. I had 800 followers and I just said, I use a tomato timer, Pomodo timer or whatever. And it's 25 minutes. And I, I just said, I use a tomato timer I 20, for 25 minutes. I do it twice a day in the morning. And all I do is comment on threads. And when I was doing threads or when I'm on threads, I do this tomato timer and for 25 minutes, I'm focused on commenting. That's it. Nothing else. Just commenting for 25 minutes. And then I do a 25 minute session at night or the afternoon just a simple, boring task. People were blown away by, and I was like, huh, that's interesting. It wasn't this groundbreaking, at least I didn't think it was. It was just this free tool that I used. And people were blown away by it. People have good at, and since then I included that in Threads on H1. And people are like, dude, I love this tomato timer. There's something about you hitting the timer and seeing that 25 countdown, like putting earplugs in and you block out the noise from everything. And you, you have this timer. And I, I do it when I write a daily email, I set the timer. Uh, I do it when I create an Instagram reel, I set the timer. I do it when I comment on threads, I set the timer. I do it when I write a long form, I set the timer. And most times I, I finish way before the 25 minutes is up. However, if I didn't use the timer, for example, like when I create a reel, I'm usually done with 15 or 16 minutes to go. So I do it in about 10 minutes. If I didn't use the timer, it'd take me four hours. <laughs> as silly as that sounds, there's something, it's psychology where you see that timer clicking down, you're like, I, I got to get this task done. So I really feel like I can get more done in two hours, hour and a half of these 25 minute chunks of time than I can in a week sometimes without a timer. As silly as that sounds, but it's really powerful. It's Parkinson's law, like the, yes. the time yeah. allotted to a yeah. task Yes, will, like how much time you give to a task is how much time you'll spend on it. So if you give yourself yes. a week to... Yeah write this post, it'll take a week. If you give yourself yeah. 20 minutes, take 20, 25. It's yes. so powerful. Yeah. It, and it, you it, can it, use it, that it, to your advantage. Yes, exactly. Um, 
Bjorn, I don't suppose you had any questions before we open up to the everyone else. No, not specifically. I think this was a well-rounded chat. So let's dive into the questions. So I see Hassan asked, how can we use AI as a threat creator? So maybe Adam, that would be the question. Do you use AI or how do you leverage it? Yes or no? I don't will I I'm not I don't really use it that often. So what I sometimes will do, I repurpose a lot of my threads, like a lot of my threads. And so what I sometimes will do is it's like a short form thread. I'll just copy what I posted in June or July. And then I'll just say, I'll talk to chat GPT and say, can you rewrite this five times? I'll find one or two out of the five that are, and I might tweak it a bit. So it's just, that's how I use it. I know that's not the best way to use it, but I will use it for like, I do use it for my audience's problems and it's not copy and paste. I purely use it for, uh, for research purposes. I'll say, what are the biggest problems my audience has? And then it'll give it to me and it'll be somewhat general, but it'll jog something in my head. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I struggled with that problem. I here, I'm going to share how I solved that problem. I didn't think of that. Or what are the top 10 desires of uh, my, my target market? And oh, you know what? I didn't even think of that. People do desire that. And so I'll talk about that and I'll get specific. So that's how I, I a lot of it, I, I use like chat. It's more research. It's not like to write my post or anything like that. I know a lot of the people will talk about, oh, get chat GPT to do all the work for you. But I use it mainly just for research purposes. I'll read a point and then it jogs a memory mm -hmm. of, oh, a story of, uh, I, that I can share. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's really a writing slash ideation assistant almost. That's yeah. how I yeah. use it as well. It's yeah. very powerful if, if you do it like that. Cool. Jasmine asked, what is one person you really, or wait, what is one person what you find really inspirational as a creator that makes you want to push further? There was a guy who just passed away, Ker Kerwin Ray out of Australia. Uh, he was like a uh, like a Tony Robbins, motivational, inspirational. Mm. And, and he obviously wasn't on Tony Robbins level and I didn't know him or anything, but I've consumed his videos for years. He talks relationships, he talks business marketing and all that. And he passed away two weeks ago and he was only 49. I, I don't know what happened. I, I know he had a history of like drugs and years and you know, substance abuse years and years ago. Um, but he had two little boys uh, or two kids. I think they were both boys. I loved his content. Um, he was more on TikTok. I don't, I'm not really on TikTok anymore. So somebody posted about his passing a couple of tactics two weeks ago. And that shocked me just because he's 49 and I'm 43. So it was like, it, when he's got two kids. And again, I don't know how it happened, um, but he has this quote and he says, anytime you're struggling with business, creating content, whatever. And he says, it can be simple. It can be easy. It can be fun. It can be simple. It can be easy. It can be fun. It can be simple. It can be easy. And you just say that to yourself out loud a couple of times when you struggle. And it doesn't have to be business. It could be relationships. It could be a diet, whatever. It can be simple. It can be easy. It can be fun. I've been saying that some form of that lately, just as like a little honor to him. So he comes to mind just because the passing away Lennox, I, it's funny. So I look at, so I have, I look at kind of creators, like I look at, I call them internet marketers. I don't, it's the business opportunity space. I don't like that space. That's the space I'm in. I don't like that space. I look at Lennox, I look at Bjorn, I look at you guys as like creators. I like Justin Welsh, Dan Cole. I look at you guys as creators. I don't look at you as internet marketers, like direct response, blah, blah, blah. I'm in that. I'm trying to get out of that. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm using the word creator more. I think it attracts a different type of person. Mm. I don't want to be in the business opportunity space. like make all this money online and, and it's, that's my fault it, because the content I put out. So I'm, I'm, it's my fault. I'm not saying it's the platform. I'm not saying it's my audience. You put out shitty bait, you're going to catch shitty fish. <laughs> and, and, and I don't mean that like I, I should say, put out you, whatever bait you put out, you're going to attract those type of people. So if I'm saying McMahon land, of course I'm going to attract those type of people, you know? Um, so I'm trying to transition to what I call you guys as creators. And it's probably more so in my head, but I look at like more legitimate entrepreneurs and, and it's semantics a little bit, but I, I don't like that internet marketing and that map of research is all in that space. So it's, I've done it to myself. I'm not saying that it's the audience, it's my audience, it's the platform, whatever. So I look at it as those two things that I'm trying to transition over to this creator mm. thing. So I look at Lennox's stuff. I look at the art stuff. I'm inspired by what you guys are doing with uh, Saints College. Uh, I have a school community and I, I, I don't even, to be honest, I don't like looking at your community because it reminds me of how 
bare bones mine is and what I'm lacking. Um, and that's, I got to do better. So in one regard, I like it because it inspires me to uh, make it better. And it shines a light on how, where I'm lacking. But on the other side, I, it's, it's free at front. So my buddy yesterday said, Hey, I, did you buy those other threads guides that are out there? And I was like, no, I was like, I, I don't want them to info. I don't want to buy their stuff. And I don't want to be influenced by, I don't want them to be like, Hey, I read this in X, Y, Z. And, and so the part, and I know that's weird thinking, but I, I've been in your guys' classroom and you guys have like very in-depth stuff. And I didn't want to like start consuming it as I was writing threads on Mage 2, where people are like, I read this in Saints College. He talked about that. Or, I don't want, I'm almost like stealing it, but I don't want to be influenced. But yeah, you, what you guys are doing, and that inspires me. I, I, and again, I look at it different. There's another guy, his name's Morgan. I can't remember. He's on threads, but he, I look at him as more of a creator and, and, and the, the copywriting, the, the depths of the post, Dan code, the Justin Wealth breakdown of the three things that Justin focuses on, blah, 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 Alex Ramosi, all that stuff. So I look at it like that and I'm trying to get into that. So that was a long-winded answer to say the couple of people that inspire me, but yeah, you, you two both do on how you operate and how you do things. And it's where I'm trying to go in the creator space type of thing, not being make money online, quit your job. And it's hard because my handle is piss off boss and, and I <laughs> want to change that, but I've gotten so many compliments over the last three, four months. Like I, I wanted to change it in June. And then I, I somebody complimented you. I was like, oh, maybe I'll keep it. And then Threads Unleashed came out. And then all these people were like, oh my gosh, I love you using name. I can't forget it. And I'm like, oh shoot, if you can't forget it, I can't change it. I've wanted to, I wanted to delete the periods. I had Instagram just piss off boss, no periods. But I'm like, shoot, what if people go to tag me and then they can't find me because they put the periods in. And I was like, I better just, it's not broke, don't fix it type thing. But again, I know that piss off boss, all of my stuff is on my domain. Now my adamdukes.com domain. It, used to be on piss off boss because i'm trying to i'm trying to get away from that big money online quit your job type stuff but i've built a brand around piss off boss which is it's tricky and i'm probably way overthinking it which i always do but i'm trying to get away from that kind of and then i was like maybe i could still use piss off boss but not in the way the typical internet marketers do quit your job in 30 days type thing a legitimate way hey this is going to take 12 months it's not going to take 30 days like everybody else said so maybe i could change the narrative around it and have my own path on how to do it you can infuse the internet marketer with the creator and that could be what piss off boss is because yeah. in in terms of the the creator branding of what you've done with piss off boss i think it just worked so well. It's, it, it's like, who is this guy? It's piss off boss. Yes. Like, yes. and it, it represents a lot of your values. And I think yeah. those values can be, and they are, that they're, they're awesome. They're like, this is what this guy stands for. Yeah. And obviously lots of people rally around that. So look, that's my two cents. No, I, I love think, it. No, I love it. I'm sure it's a few people I, here would agree. I love it. I love hearing like. I went out to lunch with a lady or we went out for coffee like a month ago. She found me on Instagram. We chatted a little bit. She said, Hey, you want to meet? And so we met up and she's like a, in the branding space. I don't think I look in it. it this isn't the right way, but I look at branding as colors that, like that. And I know that's not, the place, <laughs> but that's what I look at it as. And, and so her and I talked and she was complimenting me on my brand and she's like a branding specialist. And I was like, it, it, again, this was like a month ago. And I was like, you think the brand is good? What about my colors though? My fonts don't match. I'm trying to, and I know that's silly, but then hearing your comment, Lennox, about the brand and it, it reinforces school. There's another lady that made a post yesterday or the day before, but she tagged me on it about the brand that I built. And here I am for all this time thinking my fonts don't match. How can you say my, Lennox, your color, the, the color coordinated with the three colors. Then you go to Saints College and it's all, it just, it's, that is what I look at as brand. But obviously there's more to it than just the colors of it. But so here in your compliment, I appreciate it. Thank you of saying that there's more to it, but it's really helpful. The lady tagged me the other day. I meet the lady for coffee and she's complimenting on my brand. And here I am thinking my, my fonts don't match. <laughs> it's silly as that sounds. No, look, I, I get it. And I think a lot about this idea of brand and what it actually means. And you could say so many different things, but like the Hormozy definition is, it's like the association that your name has with other things. So okay. yeah. other people could say it's the feeling or whatever, but in terms of tactical, like actionable points, think about all of the exposure that someone might have with your presence online and think about that as a physical environment. 
And let's say there's a tree over here and this tree and is all about threads growth. And then there's another tree over here about self-improvement and another tree over here about like mental models. And then what sort of things are hanging off those trees? And can you go and eat the apples or are they going to be like poisonous yeah. apples? Obviously yeah. we don't want to have those. Yeah. Yeah. And all of these things over time, they grow into this big forest that other people can come and walk through. And you want to make that experience for people as rewarding as possible. So whether that be just on threads, in the comments, on the posts, your profile picture, your handle, the colors in your community, the yep. fonts, it's not just one thing. It's the culmination of yep. thousands of little things. Yep. And I think that's the main point to get across is it's not just one thing or another, but it's just so many different factors that really add up and yep. to, to drive this home as piss off boss conveys so much in so little. And I think that's why it's so mm. effective in Love the branding yep. because it's just like, I know what this guy stands for. No, I love it. No, that's uh, yeah, because for the last couple of months, I'm like, I got to hire someone to redesign my website because my branding doesn't look good. Like I'm, I'm telling you, colors and fonts is what I stress over, which is so silly. That, that's, again, that part of it. And you could argue that's a very small part of it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's the messaging and all that, how you make people feel, stuff like that. So, no, I appreciate it. That's a great breakdown. And by the way, if someone isn't going to write a post about what they learned in this class and how three takeaways are it can be simple it can be easy and it can be fun i will write a post on it please someone beat me to it or bjorn or adam because that <laughs> yes. needs to be a post because simple easy fun that's what we're all here for yeah so, so so i have a weird way of doing acronyms and letters so how i remembered that was his order simple easy fun it's like sex and so that's the actual thing that's how i remember because I'm like, did he say easy first, then simple, then fun, or fun, then simple, then easy? And I'm like, how am I going to remember it's simple, easy, fun, simple, easy, fun? And I was like, wait, SCF, it's, so that's how I remember the order. <laughs> it, it, so I properly say it how he used to say it, like SCF. Here I am thinking that, that it's like a staircase where you've got the longest one at the top and the shortest one at the bottom, and it looks nice for a threads post, but then you're just saying, it just, it's like sex. Yeah. <laughs> so I like your way of remembering it better. <laughs> yep. Okay. So I think the, we've answered the question about what, like one person who you find inspirational. There was also another one we might've already, okay. It was more about, you've got someone asked or mentioned that they've had threads unleash 1.0. We'd love to know what, uh, 2.0 has to offer, but I believe we, we have already touched on that mm -hmm. in a nutshell. It's that. 1.0 is social media copywriting and 2.0 is like making more offers yeah. and getting over this fear of judgment and yep. Yep. putting yourself out there. Yes. Yes. Does right. anyone else have any questions for Adam? Speak now. Because I think Chanel is raising her hand. Yeah. Oh, yes. Chanel, please, far away. Yes. Adam, I watched your rollout of Threads Unleashed yep. um, two on Threads. Yep. And I know you said that some of the stuff that you came up with was like on the fly, but yeah. can you summarize your strategy for building anticipation mm -hmm. to sell a digital product? Yeah, I, I, honestly, it was like on the fly. Yeah, I, I would go out for a walk and I'd come up with, I came up with a giveaway idea, like on a walk. I was like, I should do a giveaway. So maybe I'll give away three copies. Maybe I'll give away five copies. And I got home and I just posted, I'm going to do a giveaway starting tomorrow. I had no idea how I was going to do it, what questions I was going to ask. I wanted to make it fun and get engagement in that. And so like I did a giveaway, was it Thursday, Friday, Saturday? And then I had to give away two on Sunday. At five o'clock Sunday afternoon, I was way overthinking. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I have to give away two more. I don't know what to do. And so I did one. I think around six o'clock that night. And then I posted one at midnight and I, I was like, I, I can't go to bed until I think of one more giveaway. What am I going to do? And I was like, how many pages is it? I was like, that's perfect. I think that got 150 comments. <laughs> um, so they, the, the, that part, the affiliate contest, giving away prize money and that, that idea came to me like 
that idea came probably a little bit before when I first announced it. I think I said, I'm going to do an affiliate contest and really hype up the affiliates. So that was planned, but the giveaway wasn't the title thing was, or not that I'm sorry, that not the title thing, the cover, the, the comparing, I literally, I honestly paid for two covers on purpose just so I could run a poll. That was it. I just want give me two covers. I'll pay the extra money for both purely because I wanted to run a poll and people voted on it. I didn't like either cover. Then I had somebody recreate the cover and then I posted that and any reason that I could talk about it, I found a reason to talk about it. I like anything. And, and it was, and some of it was little stuff. So yeah, I was either directly promoting it with get on the wait list. So the wait list thing, I've, it's funny. I've suggested people build a wait list before the digital product. And I tell them, I said, I've never done it. And I've seen people do it. And it's a good idea. And so I'm like, I should probably, maybe I should do it. Maybe I should take my own advice. And so I did the wait list and I said, my goal is 500. I honestly thought there is absolutely no way I can get 500 people on the wait list. Like last Tuesday, I think I had 170 and I texted my buddy. I'm like, 500 was my goal. 300 would be cool because I'm not going to get 500. Like Thursday, I was at like 370. I was like, okay, maybe 500. Is. So I didn't think 500 was, it was a stretch goal. Like no way. But I, I hit 500. I think it was like 560 or 570. But so the wait list, I plugged that every single day. I used Black Twist, the, the, the thread scheduler, and I would pitch it every single day, at least once for the wait list. But yeah, the contest worked really well. I think the affiliate, or I'm sorry, the giveaway, I think the giveaway was probably engagement wise. That was probably the best thing. And the questions were really simple. I did what is, what is the price? And the, I was going to go with $17. My buddy was like, dude, you can't go less than 27. So I was like, good point. He's like, you've proven yourself with threads one, you go with 27. A lady suggested twenty six ninety nine. She says twenty six ninety nine because that's different, like your content or unique or something like that. And I'm like, that's brilliant. So I went with twenty six eighty one. I'm born in nineteen eighty one. That number alone has created so much buzz because it's not twenty seven. And and I credit her. I tagged her in all the posts because I'm like, this was not my idea. This was her idea. And she joked around yesterday. She's like, am I going to get royalties? And I was like, I'm trying to tag her in every post because you deserve the credit. It wasn't, that wasn't my idea. And it's, and now has that translated to sales? I, the 2681, who knows? But it has created a conversation around it. So then when I increased the price last night, I increased it to 3681. I'm like, I was going to do 37 and I was all changing it. I'm like, wait. It's created conversation, so I'm going to keep with it. But I think the secret, or so-called secret, is just talking about it a lot. I'm working with a client one-on-one, -on -one, and she launched her product on Monday. And I just said, hey, whatever I, I, whatever I throw out there on threads, because again, most of it's just off the top of my head, do whatever I do. She saw me doing the covers. She did the covers. She saw me do a giveaway. She did a giveaway. So it, it's just talking about it beforehand, building up that anticipation. The Taylor Swift does it with her albums. Hollywood does it with all their movies. But a lot of people come to me. They're like, Adam, I launched the digital product. I, I made one sale. I'm like, I'm gonna, did you talk about it before? And they're like, well, no. There was zero anticipation. And I've launched stuff where I like maybe made a post about it six hours prior. And the, the sales reflect that. You, I didn't build it up. And I think that is a huge part of it, is that in building up that anticipation beforehand. And I remember a convert, Gary Vaynerchuk was on a podcast a couple of years ago. And this author said, hey, I have this book coming out in two weeks. When should I start marketing it? And Gary B goes, six months ago. He's like, six months ago? Like, why don't you tell me six months ago? But, but that, was, that was exactly right. He, he, this guy was thinking, this author was thinking, it, it's coming out in two weeks. Should I start? Do I start now or maybe wait a couple of days? And you like, no, you should have started a long time ago. So I think that buildup of, of, of a week before, 10 days before, and, and just talking about it a lot. I don't think people understand how often you have to talk about it. Um, and you got to remember how fast, especially on threads, the feed moves. You could post and uh, offer at 9 a.m. or a, a post about it at 9 a.m. and 11. 0.1% of your audience is going to see both of those posts and, and, and because the feed moves so fast. But I think a lot of us think, oh, I, I just talked about it two hours ago. Everybody's going to see. First of all, probably three to 5% of the people of your audience saw that first post. What are the chances that three to 5% are going to see that post again? And if they do, who cares? But I think that's the message is you have to talk about it a lot and find interesting ways to talk about it, whether it's giveaways, whether it's affiliate contests, whether it's covers. Like I said, I purposely designed two covers. And then I had a lady reach out to me Monday and I was like, I'll redesign it. She did it. And then I shared it again. Any reason I can talk about it. Three points to drive home there. One, talking about it doesn't mean promoting. Talking about it no. is just, what do you think about this? What yes. do you think about that? Yeah. 
It's raising awareness. Yes. Second one is that I remember James Clear, author of Atomic Habits, yep. saying yep. that being a book author is actually two main roles. One is writing it, but once you've written it, that's only that's actually the easiest yeah. part. Yes. Because then the actual part begins, which is the promotion. Yeah. And you, it's literally pointless without the promotion. Yeah. And this is the same. Actors and actresses, they get hired based on Instagram following and the numbers of followers they have because it's the promotion of mm -hmm. the movie, not the movie itself. So that was the second thing I wanted to say. And then the third thing in terms of launching is literally what Bjorn and I are in the process of doing now. So stay tuned to all of this inside yep. the community is a framework, whisper, tease, shout. Mm. And this is in $100 million leads. You whisper something, you like, like hey, someone's coming soon. And yep. then you tease it. This is what the thing will be. And then you shout it. And okay, we are launching this thing at this time. And we are going to let you know about it every two hours until it launches. Yeah. And you build up the frequency from whisper, tease, shout, and you also build up the specificity going from general to specific. And I just like that sort of framework because it's a nice way to think about that launch period from just starting small and then building up. So hopefully that's helpful. But Claudia, you've got yeah. uh, a hand raised. You're so, on mute, Claudia. Mute. Hold on. Yeah. Um, hi, Adam. My question is, what's next for you? Good question. I don't know. I don't know. I'll probably just stick with the threads. I have a, the digital product challenge where I help people create digital products. That is, I really love helping people get over the BS and, and, and kick those false fears and, and create something of their own and putting it out there. And, and that's been like my, my baby. I, I said, I want to help a thousand creators launch their own digital product. And then Threads Unleashed through a whole wrench in that thing is a good problem to have. But that was like the mission was help people create digital products. And then Threads Unleashed came and I was like, it got put on the back burner. And then I started talking about it more. And then I'll be honest, I saw other people releasing Threads Guides and I was like, they're going to take my crown. I can't release my Threads King crown. I got to come on something else. So then I tease Threads. I love the whisper. It's funny. I have a $100 million leads and I haven't read it, but I love that. I have to read it just because of that right there. So then I, I put out a post two weeks ago on a Saturday. I was at my parents' house. Honest to God, there's a guy that's resold Threads Unleashed probably like a hundred times, part one. And he had made a post. I remember exactly where I was at my parents' house outside. And he made a post about a new Threads guide. And I was like, he's cheating on me. He's cheating on me. And I hit the plus sign on threads. And I said, threads unleashed two is coming out October 28th. Like his post right there <laughs> triggered as petty as that might be. It triggered something in me. And I've been thinking about doing it. I kept delaying it and I delayed it because of the pressure and all that. And I said, screw it. I'm doing it. But yeah, what's next? I don't know. I, I, I've got a few people asking about like writing emails and stuff like that. I don't know if I'll get to that. I really, I'm, I'm, I, I talk about making this, uh, selling one product. I'm a big believer in just selling one offer. Yeah. I want to be known for that. And so part of me is thinking about like somehow combining whether I can like a bundle type thing, Threads Unleashed 1, Threads Unleashed 2, is maybe some additional stuff uh, and just being known for threads, but I don't want to tie myself to threads. That's what I worry about. I don't want to pigeonhole myself. Um, however, everybody like Dan Co started as a web designer, Dustin Welch was the LinkedIn guy, and then he branched out. So I guess I could be known as the threads guy and still eventually branch out. But yeah, what's next? Honestly, I, I don't, I want to simplify it. I feel like I have too many offers and, and I, I preach simplicity and here I am like, it's, it's do as I say, not if they do. And having multiple offers, it's confusing. It's tricky on the back end with email sequences and all that. And I would rather just promote one offer. And I thought of like just calling it piss off boss and it would be all my, basically a bundle of everything. And okay, this yeah. is all I sell now. It's 99 bucks. If you want to buy it, great. If you don't want to buy it, great. But that's the only thing I sell. I'm leaning towards that simplicity thing of just selling one thing. Uh, I also really, the idea of just selling PDFs. Just, uh, yeah, just that sticks. Yeah, just selling PDFs. I, there's something about just. Not videos, not logging in, not, yeah, I lost my login. There, that was part of the reason Threads on was so successful. It's, it's just a PDF. You can read it in 15 minutes. You can start implementing it right away. There's no login. There's none of that crap. And not to say courses and videos are bad. I'm not saying that, but there's some, I've had a few people say, I'm deaf. I love Threads on I never, ever, you know, you know like, what? Oh. I say this very often. 
because like I'm not English, right? But I've had a lot of people that comment about courses and so on. And they comment about, oh, I found it really hard to get into a very popular course. And then you go and dwell into that. English is not their first language. They have a bunch yep. of, some of them disabilities. So yep. some of them yep. are deaf. Some yep. of them have learning disabilities. So we all learn in a different way. And yep. that will really determine how we absorb the materials that are being given to us. I think there's something very simple about documents, whereas yep. a lot of people like to listen to it. But I think if you just listen to something, you don't take notes. You don't, it doesn't register with you. So I think yep. written is better. I but. think like listening, like I could be listening to a podcast. I could be doing the dishes. I could be listening to a podcast. I could be doing multiple things. But when I'm reading something, I can't be doing the dishes and reading. Yeah. I am. I have, I can't drive and read, I, exactly. I yeah. but you can listen and read. And so I know for me, like retention on podcasts, I listen to podcasts, but I'll listen to a six. You don't retain. Like I have one takeaway because my mind is, but when you're reading, it's like a hundred percent focus on, on, you can't do, you can't multitask when you read. I fully agree. I fully agree. I would just leave with saying one thing because, and I wanted to make sure I, I did say it. I think Threads Unleashed 2 is brilliant. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. I Thank absolutely, you. can I say my signature fuck word? It's yeah. fucking brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Lenny. Fuck yeah. It's fucking brilliant. Fuck yeah. It's fucking brilliant. And I think a lot of the other stuff that I see coming out on Threads is about how I grew. And you mentioned a creator and I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you mentioned great screw. I don't know how many thousand followers with one liners that are just automated. So People yeah. go into a platform that is not about video. It's about writing. And they yeah. forgot that they need to learn how to write. Yes. And, and that's yeah. the thing that Reds Unleashed, the first one did for me, was like, okay, how do you write for a platform like this? Okay? Yes. Just so yeah. different. And how to articulate your ideas and convey your ideas through wording and in a certain way that people absorb it in three seconds. And I think you do yeah. brilliantly. And I think the second one, how you do the research, how you, the emphasis on, look, you're here for money every day. Plug in, make this as in, it's drink your three liters of water or do your 10,000 steps. Yes, yes. Every day, yeah. just go in, just, yeah. it's, don't be, yeah. there's Lenny, yeah. Just go in, just, it's one of the steps of running a business. If you're running a business, you need to sell. So just sell, yep. get in the habit of selling, get in the yep. habit of looking at what you've done and rehashing it and try to be efficient with your time. And then I will say as well, I, I use Emojipedia every day because of you. So yeah. that's all yeah. I have to say. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I use the emoji th that I think that's the same website I use all the every yeah, day. I I have it, it, as, as, as silly as it sounds, I have it as bookmarked on my browser. And I remember making a screenshot years ago and I said, I've caved. I have caved in. I have an emoji website on my bookmark browser, but it's because I, I use it so often. I know you need to. Yes. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, okay. We've got maybe time for Adam. Actually, if you've yeah. you got to bounce now, then let us know. But we've got one more question uh, that's come through in the chat. Uh, do you have time for another? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Chanel, do you want to go ahead and ask it? Yeah. I uh, was just curious if Threads is the primary platform that you use to build your audience and, and promote your products. Yeah, th yeah, threads and Instagram. It's funny because like I track my sales. Well, I, I, w I was with like UTM parameters and I would guesstimate 40% of my sales come from Instagram, which I don't use Instagram. Like I, I like the time spent on threads to Instagram is probably 90, 10, but my sales are like 40% are on Instagram, which is, man, maybe ROI purposes, I get a much better ROI on time invested, I should say, on Instagram. So I'm, I've tried to spend a little bit more time on Instagram. However, I enjoy threads more. And somebody brought that up. They made that point. They're like, what do you like creating content? I was like, yeah, that's a good point. Instagram, sure, maybe makes me more sales, but I like creating content over on threads. The written word is just much easier, obviously. You can, obviously, you can create all, like, we could create a content land in bed and, and nobody would know. You can't really do that with reels. But yeah, those are the two platforms. I'm really trying, I'm actually just getting, so I had a YouTube, I have a YouTube channel and, and I haven't uploaded a video in two years. And I have like 11,000 subscribers and I just, I, I don't know, burnout. I don't know. I got 
I don't know. I just stopped doing it. And so I posted my first YouTube video like two weeks ago. So I'm planning on getting into that, the more long form, just not fancy editing, fancy thumbnails. Just there's a surge on YouTube, like over 40 creators. People are like going viral and this over 40 creators and just very camera selfie style, no edits, no thumbnail, just no, no captions. I'm just very raw authentic videos. I'm trying to get back into that posting like once or twice a week, just because of the YouTube traffic just converts amazingly well. Cause it's video based and all that. Okay. So th that's like my long form, long-term content, search-based content, but threads and Instagram are my threads mainly. And then that, like I said, the sales is hard because the sales show that comes from Instagram, but most of those people found me through threads. So, so, so it's, I can't credit Instagram. I'm getting sales from Instagram. So those people most likely found me on thread. So it's a, that part's a little tricky just since they're so connected. Got it. Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, great question. I had to quickly mention before I forget on the topic of not being able to capture and retain content from podcasts. Everyone do yourself a favor and go and download the app SNIP, S-N-I-P-D off the app store or okay. Google store or whatever it is free for, and you can get a premium version, but it basically allows you to like double tap your headphones and take an AI snip of the podcast of like section that you've just listened to. And then you can go and review your snips. And it's one of my favorite apps ever. I, lo I love that. So what I do. <laughs> is I listen to a lot of the stuff on YouTube. And if I'm out on a walk, listening to a podcast on YouTube, I'll, if I hear a point that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really good. I back it up, I manually back it up and then I screenshot it. And then when I get home, I, that sounds way easier. <laughs> oh, that's um, awesome. So yeah, that, that's just a little aside, but uh, look, I think it's probably a good time to wrap up. And I just wanted to end on a note of Adam said that he's checked out Stanks College and he went and had a look at it and was like, oh gosh, how like this is good. Like, how do I how do I do this in my own community? And then you heard me basically say the same thing about Adam. Who is this guy? Like, who's this Fred's growth guy? Like, I thought I was yeah. that person. And yeah. the point I like the reason why I mentioned that is because this comparison is it we all do it. We all compare ourselves to others. But the way that we compare ourselves to others is optional. What I'm trying to get across here is that, okay, I look at Adam and I compare. At that point, I have two choices. I can compare and think, okay, that means I'm like worse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or that means I can learn from Adam and see yeah. what he's doing. So I can then get inspiration yeah. to do better myself. And Adam can do the same thing yeah. for us. Yep. And yep. that's what all of you can do here. You can look at other people who inspire you. And instead of the comparison in and of itself is fine, but it's the way that you have a relationship with that comparison that makes all the difference. If I could just emphasize one thing to, to wrap up on, in addition to all of the amazing nuggets of wisdom that Adam has shared with us, mm -hmm. it's to be aware of how you, the, be aware of the relationship you have with the comparisons that you, your mind does on threads and online because we all have them but you can and you do have the power to change that relationship and if you can i honestly believe that you'll go very far because not a lot of people tap into that but it's huge mm -hmm. and yeah look on that note i just want to say on behalf of everyone here thank you so much adam for coming to college class unleash and sharing your wisdom with us yes i've learned so much I know everyone else has learned so much. Bjorn, I'll let you say a couple of words. Of course. Yes, indeed. It was a blast. I took a lot of notes. I was supposed to host this call, but I ended up just <laughs> taking notes, I suppose. But so yeah, thank you so much for doing this. And yeah, one last question. Is there like something you want to add to the call or something you want to plug, something you want to share with us before we wrap it up? Yeah, I think, and I made a post about this morning and my, like I said, my sister's not in this space. She's not, she doesn't, her and her boyfriend live in New York city or they're in New Jersey, but right outside of the city and they work jobs and they don't like it and they work a lot and they, it's very expensive. And so she's been inspired and been texting me lately about 
um, watching my Instagram content and inspired and asking questions about threads and all this stuff. And I made a post about it this morning and I've said it before, but you don't know who's reading, who's listening, who's watching your stuff. You don't know how impactful your are You might not hear it from people. You might not get the comments. You might not get the DMs. You might not get the emails. You might not get the praise underneath the post, but people are watching, they're reading, they're being inspired by you. And, and I'm just a big believer that all, every one of us, I don't care who you are, you have knowledge, wisdom, skill set, or experience that could save someone time, money, stress, anxiety, shame, guilt, embarrassment, fear, uh, fear, and frequent trips to the liquor store. And that's very valuable. And, 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 and a lot of us, myself included, we shortchange ourselves that our experiences, and it doesn't have to be this grand thing. I was just, when I was telling my sister the other day, and she said, I don't even know where to start. And I said, find a problem you enjoy solving for a group of people you enjoy solving it for. That's step one. And, and talk about that problem. And again, it's got to be a problem you enjoy solving because you have to create content around it. If you don't enjoy solving it, you're not going to cre enjoy creating content around it. But then also the person, you've got to enjoy helping the person and that doesn't mean male or female or age necessarily it can but i say stuff like building an online business takes focus discipline consistency patience and a bulletproof mindset that scares away the people that want fast and easy and i do that on purpose i don't want those people in my ecosystem because those are the people that buy my stuff and then they go out of my bed I bought Threads Unleashed two days ago and I'm not at a thousand followers. I want a refund because they have unrealistic expectations. I told her that. Find a problem you enjoy solving for a group of people you enjoy solving it for and talk about it. And you, you have no idea. The, the, my two favorite compliments that I get, it's not, hey, Adam, you helped me make money. The lady commented on my live stream on Monday. Adam, you gave me confidence. Adam, I'm proud of myself because it's, I created a PDF, a 43-page PDF and <laughs> you feel proud of yourself because of some, a 40, that is such a cool <laughs> feeling that I had on that person that they feel pride because of a little PDF that I wrote. It's like how wild is that? Or that they feel a boost in confidence. Spreads and least one, I got a lot of feedback of, I, Adam, you give me, they use the P word. They, you've given me permission to be myself. That wasn't the intention, but that's my favorite feedback. Kind of a little 43 page PDF I wrote that they feel that they can be themselves now. So like all of us have this magic inside us that can have a, 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 a such a greater effect, a, a impact on people that you really, that you even realize. And I look at it as this ripple effect. If I can change Sally Sue's, she feels more confident in herself. Sally Sue's going to be a better mom to her kids. Her daughter's going to see that confidence and maybe be more, I know it's woo, but it's, I, I might be affecting Sally Sue indirectly affecting Sally Sue's life. And you guys and gals can all have that same kind of mentality. It helps me get over that whole fear of judgment and, and imposter syndrome as, wait, it's not, I'm not just affecting Sally Sue. I'm affecting like her fan. And I know it's weird, but that's how I look at it. And we all have that. And look at us right now. There's seven of us on this live call. I'm in Las Vegas. You guys and gals are scattered around the world. This is a free platform. At least Google Meet is free. And we're, connect we're connecting with each other and sharing stories and, and, and advice. And like, what a time to be alive is, 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 is the message. You know? and, and what an opportunity that every one of us has literally holding in our hand and, and a message that we can share an impact with the world. That was a lot longer than I thought, but I'm really passionate about, we all have magic that we can make an impact on people. That is beautiful. Wow. And I think it's a beautiful point to wrap up. Yeah. Adam, again, thank you yeah. so much. Thank and you. if everyone loved this and would love to do a round two, do a love heart emoji. Yes, I'm yeah, doing absolutely. Lots. absolutely. So we can peer pressure Adam. <laughs> yes, no, 100%. I'm, I'm, I'm always down. Like I, I love doing, I do these live streams on Instagram and I, I tell people, I, I get a high off of them. I, I really do. I, I, I really enjoy it. It's not this bullshit of, oh, I'm really passionate about it. And then behind the scenes, I'm fucking miserable. I really like talking about this stuff and helping people and, and or trying to maybe inspire someone. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down for no ar arm twisting for a, a round two. Adam, your enthusiasm shows. And honestly, it's just such a pleasure to, as you said, to hang out with like-minded people and nerd yeah. out about weird yeah. stuff that we all yeah. love. Thank you thank so you. much, Adam. Yep. And thank you guys. This was a college yep. class on leash. 1.0.